All right, today we're working on a, a Dyna digger. It's like one of those gas-powered shovel things. This one's an oldie. Uh, it's got a two-horse Tecumseh uh, Formula 2.0. It's a TM049XA-3615D. Um, so far, it's got a whole mess of problems. The I noticed the throttle does absolutely nothing on the carburetor, very little. Um, I'm guessing that the return spring is busted on the car because I can just do that and nothing. There's no resistance whatsoever. Um, the fastener that holds in the air cleaner was something that someone cooked together there and just spun right out of the casting, or the plastic rather. So they don't make this model anymore, so I gotta figure out how to deal with that. You can see the, the brass insert right there. Or it looks like a brass insert. I'm trying to pop this fuel tank off. Stick the impact driver on it. It's 11.30 seconds. Okay. It's not off now. It's not going to be. Let's see if we can pry that out. And the fuel tank should pop right off. Unless this thing just broke inside too. What fun. Okay, I had a nice video of this for you guys, but my GoPro decided to eat the video. So thank you GoPro, just locked up on me. So just to recap, I did get the tank off. Um, it was just held on with a stud there. There is a vein on this carburetor that controls the engine speed. This vein just kind of sticks up in here, and the wind from the flywheel just kind of rotates that and controls the throttle. Kind of an older setup, you don't see that too much anymore. Um, I also did see that there's a, a spring on this side of the car, but underneath that throttle shaft. Normally there's a return spring there, but there is absolutely no resistance on this one, so I'm wondering if that might be bad. Um, regardless, I have a feeling this carb is going to be very inexpensive to just replace. It's a Zama C1Q carb, which is extremely common. Um, so I'm guessing it's probably just going to be easier to replace this one for 20 bucks, and it's going to be to pay 10 bucks on a rebuild kit for it. So I'm going to go look that up and just see what we're dealing with. Um, after that's done, assuming that carb is cheap, I'll order a carb. Uh, but first I'm going to make sure we got spark and we, I'm fairly certain we got good compression and then we'll go from there. Oh, and uh, to note also the fasteners that hold the metal cover, uh, flywheel cover on our, I think, 11 30 seconds, no, the other quarter inch and the rest of the fasteners appear to be 11 30 seconds. I did cut the fuel line as hard as a rock anyway, got to replace that. Tank needs to take it uh, back in the ultrasonic cleaner, it's nasty. So, we'll see what parts are going to cost for this thing, but we might be able to save this. Alright, so I took the carburetor for this thing. It's uh, $28, so we're just going to order that carb. So, now we're just going to check to make sure this thing has spark before we actually uh, hit, the, hit the purchase button. So, I'm going to pull the plug out. This, is, this trick works on uh, cars, it works on lawnmowers, it works on just about anything with a spark plug. So, we'll just take this plug out with a plug wrench. Doesn't even look that old. Someone probably just replaced it trying to get this thing running again. So you stick the plug in the boot. Just like so. Ground it out in the frame and turn the engine over. I'm just going to turn it over with, uh, I'm not going to be able to get a socket on there. I guess we'll have to use the flywheel cover. Too many machines apart in the bench. I'm gonna start confusing them. Put 
put this on here temporarily, not going to go nuts trying to bolt it up. I'm just going to pull this forward to see if it gets spark with the ignition on, obviously. And we do have spark, I can see it. So that's good. Give you guys a peek. Someone can suggest a better camera than this GoPro, please do. I don't mind spending a couple hundred bucks on a camera that's going to be reliable and not lock up and just be a little more user friendly to someone who's in the garage all the time trying to film stuff. I find myself looking at my phone to make sure that you guys can see what I'm doing when I'm wearing this headset. So it's not very practical. It'd be nice if the camera had a bigger viewfinder. Um, battery life is horrible. I mean, I'm charging this thing between every video. So let's see if you guys can see this spark. Keep my arm out of the way. That's a pretty strong spark. Um, so that's about it. I mean, this, this machine appears to be good. No reason it shouldn't run if we fix the fueling issues. Just to make sure we have good compression. I suspect it will be quite good. Yep, compression is great. This is actually, uh, I can actually see the side of the piston right there. You can see the two piston rings, the compression release valve. So if I pull this cord, you'll see that move slowly. Kind of cool. All right, so we'll uh, stage all these parts that are apart and we'll uh, order some parts to get this thing going again. All right, so we got the parts for our Dyna Digger. We got a new fuel tank. This is the single most expensive part. It was supposed to come with fuel line, but it didn't. Uh, so I tapped into my stock of a bulk echo fuel line. This happens to be three by six millimeter. Part number 90015. The stuff lasts a pretty long time. It's a pretty good fuel line. So I just cut a length off. I used one of the supplied um, clamps to hold it onto the nipple on the fuel tank. Uh, we got a new fuel cap in here. It came with the tank. We have a couple O rings and gaskets and whatnot. Got a new spark plug just to place it in order anyway. Why not? got two bolts to hold the cover of the air cleaner on and we have a new air cleaner kit I think that's everything oh and the carburetor so the carburetor that came with the kit or the, that I ordered is supposed to work on this model is obviously a little bit different so side by side you can tell there are some differences right off the bat they're subtle but this carburetor should work. The carburetor that I ordered is actually a Stenz carburetor. It is 520960, replaces the carburetor that comes with this Dyna digger. Uh, but it looks like a Chinese knockoff, but a lot of times these things run just fine. You see there's some obvious differences on this plate here, or on this cover rather four screws versus two. There's some the major differences there. The fuel inlet line's a little bit different. You see it's a, a kind of a machine fitting on there. And this is just a bench fitting. So what we gotta do first is transfer this air vein over from the old carburetor to the new one. And I don't know if this is indexed into position, so I'm going to be pretty careful about how I do this. So you see there's a really, 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 really tiny screw that holds that on. What I actually might do is throw this in the ultrasonic cleaner just to clean it up a little bit so I can see exactly what I'm doing. It may be indexed into that shaft somehow, but I'm just not sure. The position probably matters on this type of thing. So 
So I'm gonna throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and we'll pick it up. All right, I cleaned the carb up a little bit, just the outside. So to just kind of get a reference as to what it looks like at wide open throttle and where that vein is, it looks like the edge of the vein is pretty parallel with the, um, the output side of the carburetor. You can kind of see that they were laid on a flat surface. It kind of just be laying flat in the bench like that at wide open throttle. So we're going to try and mimic that same orientation. And for reference, that tiny, tiny little screw there that holds that vein on is a Torx T8. Super tiny. Okay, as luck would have it, that uh, throttle shaft is indexed, so it's impossible to put things on incorrectly. Um, that prevents the vein from spinning on the shaft and also prevents incorrect installation. Now, the screw that held the uh, held things on on the new carb, which is a simple Phillips head. So I'm going to take the vein and put it on the new carburetor. But it doesn't friggin' fit. That throttle shaft is bigger than the old one. Freaking Chinese knockoffs. All right, so plan B, I think what we'll do is we'll take the throttle shaft out of this carburetor, and hopefully it'll fit in this one. You can see that output in there is just a wee bit wider on there, and the machining's different. So let's try plan B. All right, I got both throttle shafts out. That's from the old carburetor. This is from the brand new one. So I'm just going to see if this throttle shaft here fits in the brand new carburetor, the Chinese knockoff. So let's kind of thread it in from that side here. Maybe we'll get lucky. Does not appear we're going to get lucky. This now this throttle shaft is a little bit bigger on that end. Very strange. Let me get out a caliper, and measure it. All right, so the throttle shaft diameter on these two carburetors is about ten thousandths of an inch difference. So clearly we cannot swap the throttle shafts. Um, we may just take the Zama carb apart and see if we can get it to work. I uh, did never try to, did never really try it, only because uh, the replacement which obviously is not going to work even though Tecumseh says it's an exact match um, you know just not compatible this uh, the end on this throttle shaft won't fit the air vein and I don't I wish if I had a lathe I could make that work but I just don't wish I did but that end there on the new carburetor as you can see is a bit fatter than the one on the old one Be nice if they ship you a new air vein with the kit, but no such luck. All right, so plan B, I put this carburetor back together. Um, and I'm gonna try and get the Zama carb to work, the original one. Doesn't look like it's in that bad shape, so we might be able to pull it off. I'm just gonna throw it in the ultrasonic cleaner and clean it up real good. Maybe it'll come to life, who knows. Uh, and I guess we'll have to return that one because it didn't fit and we couldn't make it fit sometimes that's just how the shit goes all right so I got the old carburetor cleaned up all put back together um, I happen to have a spare metering diaphragm gasket and diaphragm or metering, metering chamber diaphragm and gasket did not have a pump diaphragm unfortunately but the old pump looked like it was in pretty good shape so we're going to try reusing it worst case we'll pull the carb off again and uh, we'll stick a gasket and diaphragm kit in there um, so now we just got to put things back together all right so i put new gaskets on got the carburetor mounted back onto the engine right there the fuel tank's just sitting here got the uh throttle spring there 
uh, really just have to cut the fuel line to length and put everything back together. All right, so I got it to run, but it starts and dies uh, on acceleration. It doesn't really run for too long, so the carburetor is probably still a little gummed up. I'm going to put something a little bit stronger in the ultrasonic cleaner and let it run for a bit longer and take it back apart. All right, so what I'm doing now is I have um, some carburetor cleaner, some Valvoline carbon throttle body cleaner that I put in a Pyrex jug and a carburetor in there. So right now there's water in the ultrasonic cleaner. In there I have a Pyrex jug, and in the Pyrex jug I have a carburetor and the carburetor and throttle body cleaner. So it's a pretty easy way to uh, clean small parts without using a ton of carbon throttle body cleaner. Got it nice and warm too. Hi, you're on camera. Hi. That's it, just hi. Smile. Okay, so after fighting with the uh, original carburetor for many hours, uh, I decided to give it up. It was in the ultrasonic cleaner for, geez, probably at least an hour. Various solvents, nothing was working. It just would not accelerate. Um, so rather than continue to fight, I was able to get that aftermarket uh, knockoff carburetor to work. I sat there with a file and just kind of filed down that throttle shaft until uh, I could get that, that air vane governor on the end of the throttle shaft. So... Got it to run. It's not perfect, but it runs. It's able to dig holes. I did, dug out a, a royal palm tree yesterday with it. Um, so it's kind of back in business. Probably about the best we can do, uh, given how old it is. Yeah, last resort, I can try getting a new OEM carburetor for it. Uh, it's a Zama C1Q uh, CP1. Might work, might not. Might be the same that we got right now. So right now it does accelerate. Has a high idle. The throttle shaft is a tiny bit sticky. Um, that's probably why, uh, but at least for now it's uh, back in business.